Hey, I finally got around to making a new video. I was on the Non Sequitur Show today with host Kyle Curtis and Steve McRae talking about the uh, new adoption of new education standards for teaching evolution here in Arizona. It was kind of a last minute thing and I did forget to mention the National Center for Science Education and the excellent job they did keeping us informed every step of the way here. If you're not a member, please consider joining them or at least sign up for email alerts so you're made aware of important issues related to education in your area. You can sign up for free on their website, but please donate if you can. For those of you unfamiliar with what's been going on here in Arizona, here's a recent commentary on a debate from local station KJZZ back in June with Republican candidates for Arizona Superintendent of Schools. It gives a great summary of the issues and how they've been trying to introduce intelligent design and creationism. The issue of intelligent design and evolution became kind of a central thing here after Diane Douglas earlier this year proposed changes in high school science standards in the state and removed the word evolution from those standards. Uh, what did these uh, other candidates have to say? Well, three of the five candidates say they have no problem with intelligent design, although there were varying degrees on what they said. Um, you know, for example, Bob Branch, again, teaching at Christian universities, said, Nothing wrong with intelligent design, uh, although I'm not necessarily going to push it as, as science. Frank Riggs said he wants intelligent design taught, again, not necessarily in science, but he said we need to recognize that this is a country founded on biblical principles and we need to understand that and somehow intelligent design fits into that. Uh, on the other side, you know, you had somebody like Tracy Livingston saying, now, w wait a second here, we're trying to prepare kids for high school and college, and we're not doing them any favors by suggesting that something other than evolution or something close to that is, in fact, science. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of all over the board. So how did Diane Douglas, our current superintendent, then respond to all of this? You said she was on the defensive? She was on the defensive. Uh, you know, she, as she pointed out, she has never specifically included the words intelligent design in the proposed curriculum. Now, by the same token, by taking out the word evolution or replacing it with certain things or, or, or kind of diluting it, I think her aim was to open it up for teachers to be able to teach something in, in the alternative. Now, she was a little defensive on it last night. She said, well, here's the deal, Howie. When, you know, people say evolution. Well, there's chemical evolution and there's you know, uh, biological evolution and everything else. And somehow saying that by changing the standards, we're somehow... Uh, you know, making it easier for children to figure out on their own. Let's look at exactly what Diane Douglas said. There are many areas of evolution. There's chemical evolution, microevolution, macroevolution. They're all in the same standards under the same blanket definition. We don't explain to our children what are the differences between the different types. We don't teach them that. Who does that sound like? Evolution has six different meanings. First, you'd have to have cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, matter. Secondly, you'd have to have chemical evolution. The hydrogen from the Big Bang would have to evolve to all 92 elements, plus the synthetic ones. Then you'd have to have what we call stellar evolution. The stars would have to evolve. And nobody's ever seen a star form. We see them blow up all the time. And yet there's enough stars out there that everybody on planet Earth can own two trillion of them to yourself. Those are the ones we know about. We don't know about the ones we don't know about. Then we'd have to have what we call organic evolution, the origin of life. Nobody has a clue how life can get started from non-living material. We'll cover more on that in the next session about the origin of life. Next, they have what's called macroevolution, changing from one kind of animal into another. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog. You and your dogs. Jeez. Anyway, she goes on to say, show me where any scientist has proven or replicated that life came from non-living matter or that, if you would, in the example we see in the museums, that man evolved from an ape. There's no proof of that. That's all I'm saying to our teachers. It's as if she doesn't understand that evolution is not the origin of life and that proof is not used in science. If she would come down to the Arizona Museum of Natural History, I could help her with the ape to man evolution. Because Diane Douglas tried to remove evolution from the school standards here in Arizona, we now have a better standard 
written by the Arizona Science Teachers Association. The most notable change includes a clear statement that the unity and diversity of organisms living and extinct is the result of evolution. So, please enjoy the Non Sequitur Show. I know I had a blast doing it. Uh, this is just a clip from for my appearance on it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to their channel, please do that and check out their website. Hot off the heels of last night's Flat Earth debate, we bring you part two, where tonight Dr. Joshua Bowen will be going against Bill Ludlow in a Flat Earth epic match. Gentlemen, are we ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Bowen's ready. Hi, uh, Dad. Well, well, <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, one one quick thing to say well, about last that. night, though. Um, no con. If you didn't know this, no concepts didn't show. We had to bring in uh, two wow. other fight overs. However, if you go to No Concepts channel today, he has deleted all of his flat Earth videos, and his avatar says it's round. So very ominous, and uh, I think maybe we can finally declare an absolute 100% no if ands, or buts about it victory. There it is. So uh, congratulations, Reds. You, you did it last night. Um, we're going to talk about a, a really cool and important news article to start out with, and then we'll bring on Michael, who was um, part of Lord Rael's uh, cult, I guess would be the correct word to, to use. Right, Dr. Bowen? Would you consider them a cult or religious? Yeah, I mean, I think they would probably fit that standard. That They would refer to themselves as a congregation of Lord Rael. But yeah. Yeah, got it. Um, and real quickly, uh, Friday, I know you people have been asking, uh, Friday is the climate change uh, talk where uh, Dr. Peter Ward will be here to go over uh, what, some things that are happening with the uh, climate. November the 5th, Sargon of Akkad versus Adam Kokesh. That's going to be good. Um, and then the thing everybody's been asking about, November the 8th, Isaac Arthur, uh, who is a uh, science educator and YouTuber, uh, he will be coming to talk about the ability to upload minds one day. So you, you can get tired of your body. Your uh, your experiences and everything that's inside of your uh, your brain can <laughs> will be able to be uploaded to like a disc, I guess, and then plugged right into a new body. So can't wait for that. Um, and then on November the fifteenth, R and Rob will take on Jason King uh, on creation versus intelligent design. So uh, yeah, I will now turn it over to Steve, who will introduce uh, the article. And we'll go from there. Yeah, it's so about about a month ago or so. There was a thing on the Arizona school district where a lady named Diane Douglas had tried to somehow get around the whole Supreme Court not allowing creationism and intelligent design to be taught in the school system. And so she had uh, basically had a proposal or tried to do a proposal to incorporate intelligent design into the Arizona schools district's curriculum, which had gloriously backfired as as. Uh, Bill Lolo here has is, 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 uh, been pointing out today, so I had him to come on and see if he can kind of tell us what exactly happened there and why did it backfire so spectacularly. Well, yeah, hey, Bill, it was awesome. Um, I miss you. Bill, you're welcome. Hey, hi. <laughs> um, yeah, Diane Douglas is a real right-wing conservative Christian, um, was elected to the as a state superintendent of schools here in Arizona. Um, it's an elected position. Um, things like changes to our, um, the Board of Education can recommend changes to school standards without having this put to a vote to the public. So it's a real important position in that, you know, they can actually change school standards um, based on just that little board, you know, voting on it. And um, what happened was they tried to um, bring in watered down standards that removed the words evolution. Um, you know, anything to do with the theory of evolution. Um, they brought in a young earth creationist from a local Christian college uh, to give recommendations from the board. And then they adopted what was called, I think the Hillsdale standard, it was out of Michigan. Um, and the wording again was real vague. It was watered down. This is what they were going to propose that we adopt here in Arizona, which opens the door 
for creationism or intelligent design to be brought in um, because it doesn't require people to teach evolution really um, as the only as the only thing so um, backlash on this was huge um, you know Arizona is a real conservative state I mean I live in an almost exclusively Mormon neighborhood here uh, they're awesome neighbors but I mean very very conservative um, and, and uh, this type of thing is something we've fought against for a long time here. It doesn't seem to make national news in places like Kentucky, like, you know, we see it, but um, we do fight against this, right, on this type of thing a lot. This time, people just mobilized. I mean, um, we had the Secular Alliance for Arizona, the Secular Co Coalition, um, even the Arizona Athe Atheist Facebook group I'm a member of, you know, just a maybe 800 people, but I mean, people really mobilized. People wrote in, you know, they, they, they made it public. They, um, it was uh, just comment sections of everything, people talking about it, um, you know, mailing letter, email campaigns. Um, there was a website where you could leave comments on there. Um, it wasn't public comments, but it went directly to the people on the board. And there was just a real concentrated effort to get the word out that this wasn't acceptable. And it worked. Um, Diane Douglas was not, uh, she lost in the primary. We had, I believe, originally four or five um, Republican candidates or, um, it, for the position of the you know, school board superintendent. And all but one of them wanted creationism, thought that it was okay to teach creationism in the science class. All of those lost. And one of the reasons they lost were they were, I mean, basically hounded by people and being exposed as, you know, this is not right. And um, the guy that did uh, win the primary for the Republicans, Frank Riggs, and I personally went back and forth with him several times, just in messages and letters and, and you know, emails. And, and uh, he is not for teaching creationism in science class, but he still believes it should be taught in history class. So, um, you know, he's kind of got around, okay, I, I'm not going to say it should be taught in science, but mm. we should teach it in history, which I, I don't know how, how right. you apply creationism to history. <laughs> I'm not sure how so, that's history. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, so, what is, um, what is the but anyway, about that? Um, I don't know. Yeah, this is moving out of science. Been really, yeah, we've been really, uh, you know, active in, in um, just kind of exposing what it is that they want to do. Um, so what happened? What happened was today there was a vote. Six to four. It was still closer than I would have liked to have seen. Um, but what happened, six to four was approving these new standards. The standards that Douglas proposed didn't even get a son would stack in the British people. They were afraid exactly what the Republican can. Is he breaking up? Hey, the yeah, Bill, on the school board. Hang on, Bill. Bill, hang on. You're breaking up too much for us. Um, you're starting to break up. Oh, you want okay. to, uh, we didn't get any of that. Or, uh, Try again. Have I got connection problem? Can you Sounds hear me like now? A bit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I don't know what it was. So but, they took um, a vote six to four. Yeah. So yeah. Eight to four, um, I think, again, I think board members that were scared after they saw what happened to the, uh, the candidates in the primary who supported creationism. Um, and, and they could not even, they shouldn't even get a second. Now, the six to four vote was in favor of these new standards that were brought by the Arizona Science Teachers Association. The original standards proposed, the original revised standards pro proposed, proposed by Diane Douglas didn't even get a motion. She didn't even get a second to her motion. She wasn't even able to bring it in front of the board. So um, instead, they passed revised standards, which were actually better than what we had in the past. And they specifically say, um, if I can bring up the article here, um, they specifically, the wording used was um, the unity and diversity of organisms living and extinct result of evolution. And for Arizona, that's huge. And that was really right. huge. Um, so, you know, again, we had a we had a concerted, concentrated, you know, very strong effort on the part of the secular coalition, on the part of even Christians who who didn't want to see 
creationism taught in or, or intelligent design taught in science class everybody got together they made it be known that it wasn't acceptable um the the woman who proposed it didn't make the primary she, she she's gone at the end of this year her motion to bring it in front of the school board was seconded and we got better standards adopted in the end because of this so i it was mean a we had kind of I can't imagine it being a bigger win, especially in such a in, in such a conservative type right. area as, as Arizona. I mean, if, Arizona and Texas, you would, and, and some of the backwards states that nobody wants to live in, like North Carolina. Um, I would expect this kind of stuff, right? That is, um, that, is, that, is that is accurate. That is accurate. They, 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 if, you, if, if this can happen in those states, then there is hope for humanity. And that. Uh, so I, when I when I saw that posted, and I wanted to bring you on. I wanted to touch on this a little bit because I think this was a huge win. And I thank you for coming on, Bill, and kind of uh, giving yeah, us well, more thank detail you. on it. Yeah, yep. on it. Glad it. To do it. Bill, we we look forward to having you uh, on a full episode sometime. Yeah, yeah. I got some stuff coming up. Uh, the track discoveries I've been working on. We uh, mm -hmm. we've documented 90 sets of 270 million year old pre dinosaur uh, reptile tracks now up on the Mogollon Rim. Uh, it's turned into one of the most concentrated sites in Arizona, uh, if not the whole Southwest, for uh, for these pre dinosaur reptile tracks. And I'm I was up I was up up working on that this last week with the U.S. Forest Service and the Southwest Paleo Society here collecting more data and we're still collecting a lot of data. I was get, I was given a five-year permit by the federal government to study that recently and um, I can't because of that I can't disclose exact locations but we will be sharing information as it becomes as Sounds the data good. becomes available. Thank you, sir. So, we can't right. wait to hear that. All, all right. right. Thank, thank you. Bill. All right. My surrogate daddy. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, get that in. Uh, <laughs> Bill Ludlow and Ken Hoven still remain. That, that debate still remains to be one of the the, the all time classics. So if you haven't checked that out, head over to uh, Steve McRae's channel after this show, of course, and watch Bill Ludlow. Nihilate. I'll link it later for you guys. Uh, I said, don't, don't take everybody for your free. Yeah. Mm -hmm.